Okay, the first talk for today is by Daniel Stone and it's the real story behind Wayland and X. Uh, Daniel currently works at Collabra where he's been working full time on Wayland for the past year or so, having recently overhauled the input subsystem. He's also written a couple of dra graphics drivers in his time and has recently moved from Melbourne to Finland and more recently the UK, so it's nice to welcome him back here. So thank you very much for coming to talk to us today, Daniel. Turn this on, brilliant. Thank you, also hi. Um, yeah, as you can probably guess, I'm here to talk about uh, Wayland and X. Um, pretty much what they actually are, um, since my experience has been that no one has any idea. Um, <laughs> everything you read on the internet about it will be wrong. Um, it's ridiculous, although there are the occasional gems, which I'd recommend strongly. But this, I think, is pretty much the state of play, uh, which I'd like to change. So ideally, I'd like everyone in this room at the end of it, even if you don't agree with me, that's fine. But just stop posting stuff that's blatantly wrong in LWN comments. So I'm really bored of it. Sorry, LWN, if you're here. <laughs> There's actually a cool bro slide coming up. You'll see. Anyway, so. Why am I qualified to say this more than everyone else on the internet who says everyone else on the internet's wrong? I was born between these two X releases. <laughs> I have fixed bugs older than myself, sadly. Um, I got tricked into packaging X386 at some stage. Um, then came to LCA in Adelaide when I was very bright-eyed and enthusiastic. Um, I got plied with free drinks until I agreed to work on keyboard support. Um, two drinks, by the way. <laughs> you were drinking Malibu and Coke, so quite heckless. Um, and at the time, it was all wonder and promise, and X was going to be amazing. And um, worked on build system stuff for a while, built the first modular x.org server. Um, I think I first got it to build in a car in Quebec or something. Um, oh, going to get to Sorry? Going to get to uh, no, I was driving back with Clay at about 130 miles an hour. I, I wasn't driving, it was fine. <laughs> um, then I traded uh, Melbourne summer for Finnish winter. Um, dropped about 67 degrees in a day. I was pretty happy about that, especially because I'd never really seen snow. Um, I saw a fair bit of it. Um, <laughs> And that was to work on consumer devices for Nokia, um, internet tablets and phones. Um, all the OSO, internet tablet OS, MIMO, MIGO, MIGO Harmatan, um, pick a name, they're all good platforms. There are a few. And that was a very exciting time because I went from writing build systems to actually putting stuff in people's hands. And at the time, it's seven years old, but the UI hasn't aged a bit. Um, <laughs> well, that's terrible. Um, it looks even worse in high res. <laughs> yeah, we were pretty easily impressed. Um, everything was done in software on the worst ARM you've seen, with the exception of the Raspberry Pi. Um, we had GTK 2.6, which was still pretty CDE-ish at the time. And uh, three level submenus were cool. Every single application had a file menu, an edit menu, and everything. It wasn't anything like tablets are today. It was the desktop really slow. Um, but we had a very nice screen. We had high DPI long before Apple. And we made some errors. Um, but that, honestly, that was not my fault. Yeah, so while I was there, I got asked to make Bluetooth keyboards work. So I was off in this fine little land of um, input hot plug and you know you can plug in a keyboard and it turns up and plug in a mouse and it turns up and um, I had a D-Bus and Hell support which turned into I had a D-Bus and Hell support. And, <laughs> um, and then we removed D-Bus and Hell support and everything was all right again. But in the intervening time, that happened. And yeah, good times. Um, the iPhone 
say what you will about it, completely changed consumer devices in terms of what people were willing to accept. Or at least I thought it did. Turns out some people accepted early Android. Um, but, you know, it swings and <laughs> rubbers. Um, but yeah, more broadly speaking, it meant that I went from keyboards to looking, you know, finding, like, you know, when you press this, the screen flickers white for a second. It's like, you know, that's not on. People aren't going to have it. Um, so I basically spent the next few years not doing much more than finding little bits where the screen would flash white or, you know, you'd see a kind of half-completed frame or something and working out how to fix them. And generally, the answer to fix them was break the X back subtly. Um, I felt really bad about it until I looked at the source for everyone else's X servers, and everyone else broke the spec in the same ways. Um, and I did this for a little while. Um, it did take its toll on my once gorgeous features. <laughs> so at 18, I was very excited to go overseas for the first time. In 12CA. Um, this is after a few years of bashing on stuff. The uh, smiles long disappeared. Um, that was two weeks before I finished working on X for good. Um, and that was also long hair in the rain, to be fair, but what can you do? You can't actually see the rosy cheeks on that one. It's ridiculous. I actually look 12. <laughs> but yay! Now, the rose, it's all back. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> As a quick aside, the guy who invented um, Waylon, Christian Hoegsberg, was also an ex developer. So. Where's throwing this code away? Sorry? We're busy throwing all this code away. Let me know when it's merged. <laughs> um, so, yeah, before we get into the whole, you're just binning. X because you don't understand X and how good it is. We've worked on X for the last 10 years. We have the facial features to show for it. So, anyway. But self indulgence isn't fun, so let's go on to X because I assume you're here to hear about that rather than me. <coughs> um, originally, back in the day, so we're not talking about current X running fancy, crazy um, desktop environments or in the case of this laptop, I've borrowed XFCE. Um, back in the day um, when I were but a lad um, in Bendigo, someone had a really good idea. Mechanism, not policy. We'll, be able, we'll create this amazing framework that will let anything do anything at once, and it will be great. And <laughs> apparently people are still libertarians in America today. Um, they have not learned, and they're not ex-developers, apparently. They were. So, sorry? They were. <laughs> yeah, maybe they were, and then they left before it got horrible. <laughs> it was pretty simple, though. You know, draw a rectangle, make it white. Draw some text on that white little rectangle. Maybe draw an image below that. Cool. What could possibly go wrong? You had a window. The window manager could put a little frame around it, maybe with a title, maybe with a close button if you were lucky, maybe with a little stipple pattern, because that was the fashion at the time. Your borders could be dashed. Couldn't they? No. Your borders couldn't be dashed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they could be tiled. Sick. If you did this diagonal banding of the pattern, just like dashing. <laughs> And we had a root weave. <laughs> we had one button, we had one three button mouse. It was network transparent, hello to everyone commenting on LWN. That was a fact at the time. So, it was pretty easy, life was good. Could still achieve quite pleasing visual effects. <laughs> Um, that was cutting edge at the time because X11 uh, shot inspired by my birth added colour. But everyone grew up. Some people grew up. <laughs> <coughs> Hardware grew up. Suddenly you might have a graphics tablet, you might have a couple of mice, you might have a keyboard which had multiple bells and could you know, take messages to show on 
showed you on an LCD screen, um, and loads of other things which no keyboard had, but you might. Someone at SGI did once. Um, and we had multiple GPUs, and they almost vaguely worked ish. Then we were drawing more complicated things to show to the user. We had accelerated 3D. People wanted to watch videos, and they needed to scale them from about yay big to your actual screen, because this was the mid 90s. We had some very tasteful, very minimal, um, but still graphically demanding themes, because again, this was the mid 90s where minimalism was key. Um, and speaking of minimalism, everyone decided they wanted to do everything with their windows. We wanted to move them around to multiple desktops. We wanted them to be weird types. We wanted to use XIs because isn't it cool to have your window be two circles? Brilliant. Ellipses, I don't care. Yeah, basically terrible. Everything got ridiculously complicated. And this is a quote from a ex-Collabra uh, Metacity developer. Um, if you think that writing a window manager is really easy, this man worked on Metacity. Um, and spoiler alert, spoiler alert, no one's ever compared Wayland to nihilism. nihilism. <laughs> Give it time. Only in that that's so minimal. They added loads of stuff. 25 extensions. I think more. We binned a few because they were terrible even at the time. Um, thousands of pages of specs came out. I triple see him. <laughs> yeah, you didn't write any specs. <laughs> and while they were busy extending anything, they never touched the core because X386 were not the X consortium at the time. Yeah, they were not the X consortium. No one was the X consortium. They weren't doing anything. So the core protocol stayed the same and the core server code changed the same. The way we achieved all these great shiny new things was to wrap the server in more and more and more and more and more layers. We worked around stuff. Why would you ever fix anything when you can work around it? Why would you ever fix an OS when you could work around the fact you don't really have an OS? Because you can write an X server which would run video BIOSes might do it in real mode, might do it through an x86 emulator. It might run opcodes the x86 emulator didn't support. Might suspend your laptop for you. Might bash your IO ports. Might wrap, remap all your PCI devices. Yeah, that one should probably be somewhere over here in memory. Probably be fine. No one else wants it. Um, and to do that in assembly, um, it was a binary interpreter for ELF, COF, and A.out across loads of architectures except the ones where it wasn't. <laughs> it was an entire OS, basically. It was a terrible OS, basically. <laughs> Not just basically, it was a terrible OS. Who remembers generating a config file? Yay! Please generate me a config file. Please use this config file. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I still don't know. So. Everything was awful is the summary, and that is the last 10 years of X Talks, where we've all been saying everything is awful. But at least we had some great visual effects to show for it. <laughs> <laughs> this was the age of possibility. I found... No, th I think that was the worst one I found. Um, if you search for Enlightenment 13 Stop screenshots... <laughs> search for Enlightenment 13 screenshots on Google Images. It, <laughs> Unfortunately, most of them are gone because themes.org is gone. Um, no steampunk. Very sad. But more time passed. I became a not a miner anymore and got a passport. And we got this wonderful thing over here with a very good domain name. First thing we did is say we should let people be able to build it high beat L. Um, so we modularized the entire thing and suddenly it was all auto-tooled and it was really easy to build. But there was quite a lot to build. We accidentally split X into 345 <laughs> Git modules. <laughs> I did look that up, that's not exaggeration. It is kind of a convenient number now. Um, that was intentional. <laughs> look, basically sorry, but 
I think it was still in that one. Mostly though, we went the other way, we binned stuff. We found a lot of stuff we didn't like. So we came in with, I do remember finding 1.1 million as a figure for this before. Um, but that was on my blog, which was on a FreeBSD 4.3 machine, which finally died last year, I think. Um, and that's now lost to the ether. So we did that. We got rid of over 300,000 of what I originally thought was 500,000 lines of code. I personally binned 100,000, which I'm still pretty proud of. Um, <laughs> Ajax beat me by deleting the print server. <laughs> Which was pretty amazing. It was exactly like X, except where it was exactly not like X at all. Um, and then you could find out the LPR output by looking at a window property. Um, and someone added X print support to GLX gears. That's when we knew it had to go. <laughs> <laughs> but sadly, there was only. It depends. I think he was in a uni, so he probably had an amazing laser, so yeah, probably 100 or so FPS. Um, <laughs> faster than what we could do at the time, to be fair. Um, <laughs> and yeah, sadly, at some point, there was no more. So we started. Sorry? There's more we can delete. <laughs> yeah, X. There's at least a dozen different X servers in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're going to. We haven't run out of stuff to delete, we're still working on it. But in the meantime, we busied ourselves with adult work. We added stuff again. We added a new drawing mod model. It's not really a drawing model. I'll get back to that later. But more or less a drawing model to replace the draw some rectangles and some text. We added three input stacks. Hi. Yes. No. One of them isn't used anymore. Brilliant. Um, but we still have all four need to interoperate. They're more codependent than independent. Um, and generally, it's all a bit of a nightmare. Um, there are exactly three of us who know how it all hangs together. No. <laughs> 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 Moving on. We added more display management extensions, which again, kind of, yeah, almost independent. People still use Core X11. If you were in two before, you would have heard Dave tell you about how Xenorama is horrible. Randa 1.0 let you change resolutions, which was amazing. 1.1 let you change refresh rates. 1.2, which was actually brilliant, gave you multiple outputs. They could be hot plugged. Genius. And now Dave's just done 1.4, which I almost understand. We added more buffer transfer models, because the original model was while you were sending all your commands, interleave with that huge chunks of data. Um, brilliant. So no one uses that anymore. We added the first direct rendering infrastructure. No one uses that anymore. Yeah, th this isn't during X.org. These got added during the passage of time. Before, I, yeah, even before I was using Merck to trade MP3s in Bendigo, buy MP3s. Um, <laughs> so. Everyone uses the shared memory transport or the second version of the direct rendering infrastructure, which is all very nice. Quick detour, LWN commenters again, take note. If you haven't been paying attention to anything, please at least listen to this. Everyone uses shared memory and direct DRI2. They don't work over the internet. X isn't network transparent anymore. It's network capable, but it's not network transparent, so stop saying that because it's rubbish. Thank you. Basically, we changed everything about how X works. It used to be this nice, shiny model you saw before with all the cool little widgets. But then we wanted cool themes. And so, rather than teach X about gradients, which someone did, but it was a disaster, um, we just drew them all client-side and said to the server, here's a massive picture. Don't touch it, please. You'll only make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> Fonts got way more complex, so we just dealt with them client-side mostly. Um, we did, there was a project to uh, give clients enough information to you know, work out how big a certain font was going to be when you drew this and so on and so forth. But you ended up sending so much data that it was cheaper for the server to send the entire font over to the client and have the client work it out. So 
That's what we did. Every button, or no, not every button, every input field, every text box used to be its own window in X, which is why no one understands the function that validates the window tree. Um, I tried to remove 90% of it, but then someone wanted me to write a benchmark and I lost interest because um, it would probably break some motif app from 1995. But real toolkits said, all right, we don't need this. One window, that's all it is. This is my app, this is my content. Everything in, inside it, I'll deal with. And then when we wanted to do things like expose, again, we could teach the X server all about how to do really complex effects. Or we could just say to the window manager, you probably know what you're doing, more than me anyway. Um, just draw the entire thing, tell me what to chuck on the screen, I'll take care of that, but you can deal with everything else. So you might be wondering, and it is a valid question at this point, what the X server's actually been left with to do. <laughs> if you search Google Images for dramatic pause at 2 a.m. <laughs> you get some pretty weird stuff. <laughs> some that's fairly on point. There are no ponies and rainbows, spoiler alert. That's the answer. Doesn't do very much. Because the clients draw everything locally. They tell the X server, here's what I've drawn. Just put it up on the window, please. No more. Server tells the window manager, here's what someone else has drawn. Maybe put it somewhere. We'll see. Window manager thinks about it, decides what it wants to draw, decides where it should be drawn. If you're in expose, maybe it's up here. If you're in a pager, maybe it's nowhere. Who knows? Then the X server just does what it's told. It puts one image up on the screen. Basically, we made a second X server because the first one was great. <laughs> and by second, I mean 105 because Linux is all about choice. <laughs> you count. <laughs> I did not count the number of window managers. And when I say Linux, I mean Unix, because choice extends to kernels as well. So we have a name for what the X server does. IPC. Terrible, terrible, terrible IPC. Why is it really bad? I don't have a slide saying that it's not introspectable, but it's not introspectable. It's just a bunch of strings, or maybe numbers, or maybe pix maps that you just kind of bang around into some windows. Um, there's a couple of specs for them, but they're incomprehensible. And there's a lot of it. When I start up gedit today, empty text field. All I do is start gedit, empty document. 130 times it asks for the name of atoms, uh, mostly for window management extensions. Um, and they're blocking because Xlib is terrible. Um, so yeah, 130 times round trips around to the X server. 34 times it round trips around to the X server to get the value of a property. Um, so that means it's probably about 75 prop uh, properties it's tried to find a name of and hasn't worked out. It changes 116 properties. Um, I tried to find out what they were, but I lost interest. The one thing I did profile is um, during the startup I measured how long to see the gedit main loop was blocked on the X server for. So just really simple cumulative sum. It's actually a bit more than that um, because I'm terrible at maths. Um, I only lasted a semester and a half at uni before I went off to Finland. Um, and so it didn't occur to me until now that the maths is broken and it's a bit more. But 25 will do, let's be generous. Sometimes, however, because the X server's doing loads and loads of stuff, which you don't want it to do, it spends 1.4 seconds. Um, I was about to give up on running it, but tried it for a third or a fourth time, and um, yeah, this time it took one and a half seconds. Not really sure why. 
Um, LTT would let me find out, I guess. But Fair play, I've got a lot of tabs in Chrome. But the minimum it took for Chrome to start up, load all my tabs, the minimum amount of time it spent blocking, waiting for a reply from the X server, 500 milliseconds. That's only the blocking. <laughs> and again, my maths is broken, so at least that. Um, so why do we have these huge variable latencies? Because of because we're trying to bang a rectangle into a square hole. So things like, this doesn't obviously affect startup, but things like when you resize, the server will say, oh, this window's resized. There's a whole little strip around here that doesn't have anything in it. We'll draw something in it for them. Maybe a bit of white, maybe a bit of gray. Gray's always popular. Um, yeah, I'll draw on them. Usually, one way or another, you end up waiting for the GPU to finish what it's been doing. So that's a you know, nice little arbitrary stall. Could be really quick, could take a second, who knows. The point is that it's massively, massively variable. And so all your IPC might be blocked on the server doing something really stupid. And it's really stupid because no one wants the server to do it. The client knows what's supposed to be in the window. G edit still. Yeah. Some of them are still broken. It, it's an example of many. Even you can't say otherwise. Um, yeah. As soon as the server's done that, the first thing the client's going to do is say, grey is not particularly useful. I'm going to draw something over it. So the server has massive arbitrary variable latency because it's doing the wrong thing that no one wants it to do. Yes. <laughs> so, if we put our minds to it, think, what would an ideal future look like? Just bear with me. Clients draw what they want to locally. Clients tell the server what they've drawn. The server decides what to draw and where. All we've done is been a really terrible middleman. That's four slides of Wayland to get here. Oh no, that figure's old. I think it was about 100. Um, so again, LWN commenters, if you find yourself saying that X is the Unix way, <laughs> what one thing is X doing and what is it doing well? <laughs> Yes, it, it's terrible at everything it touches, which is everything. Um, and while I've got the uh, Internet Peanut Gallery's attention, those who do not understand Unix are condemned to quote Henry Spencer. <laughs> anyway, calm blue ocean. Everything's all right. Deep breaths. Back to Wayland. Wayland is actually tractable. I've gone through X to try and cram it into time. I'm still a little bit over time. Um, Wayland, you can actually describe to people. X, I still haven't been able to, even with the aid of these amazing slides. But the core concept behind Wayland is that every frame is perfect. Is it sacred as well? <laughs> <laughs> they are not sacred, Rob. We'll get to why later. So, yeah, a frame is a set of pixels that you should show coherently together at any one time, not with any others. It's your app's content. It knows what it wants to draw. That's a frame. So doubling back to our original ex explanation, it's immediate mode. You say, draw some stuff here and over there and over there and over there and over there. And it has no idea if you're trying to draw one coherent frame that's together, or maybe you're trying to draw a progress bar, or things that should be divided. 
But since there's no boundary between them, they'll be displayed at fairly random times. They're not separated. You will see <laughs> bad things. Those are actually all spaces. It took ages. <laughs> <laughs> um, DRI2, which was pretty much the last thing Christian, the Wayland author, did for X, almost fixes this. It does more or less give you the concept of a frame and the coherent presentation of a frame, which is all we want the server to do, but not really. There's a lot of parts it still can't fix because they're core X protocol we can't touch because it's all about the choice to run terrible motif apps. <coughs> Wayland, on the other hand, all we have is frames. That's all we know. That's a conscious choice. Display this. Cool. It might not. Whatever. That's it. That's all it does. So, what's perfect? It means that we don't want chunks of grey and then swiftly followed up by text. We don't want flickering when you resize. Flash, 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 flash. Horrible. We don't want stuff to tear when you get um, uh, incomplete drawing and you decide to scan out exactly in the middle of it. We don't ever want that to happen because we want to catch up to 2007. Because in 2013, it makes us look amateur, and it's really embarrassing when that happens. Wayland is also descriptive, not prescriptive. By way of example, when you launch a pop-up window in X11, you don't launch a pop-up window. You say, give me all the input. Put this window exactly here and nowhere else. Screen saver, give me all the input, put this window exactly here, which is the entire screen, and nowhere else. So what happens? We can't use our volume keys during a pop-up. Can't use our volume keys during a screen saver, which is great when you resume your laptop and there's music blaring out of the speakers and you just bang the lid shut and deal with it later. <laughs> the screen saver won't trigger when you have a menu open. We've tried to fix it. We sat down. We spec'd out something that would let us sort this out once and for all. We decided it was actually impossible. It would break the X model too badly. And again, it's 2013, and that is so embarrassing. And why are we putting up with it? Why are we defending it? You. <laughs> In Wayland, we say, this window here is it's a pop-up window. This is the click it came from. You know where to put it, you know what to do with it, you know if I click outside the window, it should go away. Sort it out. Everything is up to the compositor, which means drawing, means it could put your pop-up window on Mars if it wants to. Might be really hard to implement. What if there's a buggy compositor? Which puts my pop-up window on Mars? <coughs> and I'm slightly out of order. It's possible to do. Don't encourage it. Don't run bad compositors. It's fine. Window managers are about that complex as well. As for the screensaver, it's a part of the compositor because one of the other genius ideas we came up with was we probably shouldn't encourage you to type your password into random clients the session doesn't know anything about. Probably a bad idea. Security nodes, take note. Wayland is also event driven. Again, by way of example, um, when you want to listen for input devices in X, you say, tell me about the new input devices. Tell me about the current input devices. Lock on the server. Wait till the reply shows up, because Xlib is horrible. Deal with the reply. Then whenever you get a notification, deal with the notification in a different format. So you have to write two functions. Good. Wayland. Again, we've binned all those pointless middle steps. You register for device notifications. As soon as that happens, um, we send you events saying, it looks a lot like UDEV. Um, it sends you events saying, these are all the current devices in the same format as the ones you'll get later, saying these are all new devices. It's all the same code handling it. 
and you have to go out of your way to not make stuff hot plug capable and to not make it dynamic. Admittedly, in the sample clients we ship with the sample compositor, we've actually done that. <laughs> but I wouldn't encourage it and I really need to fix it. Anyway, we've got proper object lifetimes. That may sound really dull, but has anyone seen this before? X11 error, something. It'll tell you some numbers, which it won't translate for you because again, X is brilliant. And it's pretty horrible, but everyone's seen it because any object in X can just go away. If you're dealing with a mouse, if you're trying to say, tell me how many buttons you have and what they're called, because mice should be able to have a 32-bit number of buttons, um, <laughs> someone might have unplugged the mouse. And the Xserv will send you back an error, which is fatal by default, and you have to try really hard to ignore. It's only an Xserv. It's only an Xserv. It's still hard with XCB, though, and it's still hard to relate that back to what you want. It's you have to go out of your way, a long way out of your way to do the right thing. No toolkit does the right thing. On Wayland, all your objects are client side. For every input device, every client gets its own new object and the client destroys the object when it wants. So you don't get any of this. I don't have time for this, this is really boring. But basically there's another whole um, class of errors it eliminates. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, basically, if you're running a browser and all the four um, parts of your browser support different versions of a given extension, um, the server only gets one thing of this client supports this version of this extension. So it's a complete crapshoot as to what actually happens and what version the server thinks the client has. So it makes it really hard to introduce properly backwards compatible behavior because what if a different part of the client that's not aware of the new version gets an event it doesn't understand? In Wayland, everyone who wants to listen on an interface, they listen on an interface, say, this is the version I support, tell me about the version you support, and they're all separate. Everyone gets exactly what they want, totally Goldilocks, everything's brilliant. And now you're convinced because I'm a brilliant salesman. And that's an empty slide. Nice. What can you do? You can use something called Western, although you don't have to take a terrible phone picture in low light. Although the light's actually taken out all the chrome noise, which is cool. There's a lot of blue there. Western is our reference compositor for Wayland. Um, it's got a plug-in system so you can implement. We have a basic desktop shell with a panel and stuff, which I can't show you because my laptop doesn't work with the projector and it's 2013, but that's because I forgot to bring a cable. Um, so it's all fine. Um, yeah, it has the desktop shell. It's got a tablet shell. If you want to implement a tiling window manager, you can write a plug-in to Western that does that. It's all an external shell, but Wayland handles it for you in the framework. And it still supports X11 clients. Um, we spin up an X server, and the X clients think they're just talking to a regular X server. We just subtly bang them into the Wayland session, and it hangs together surprisingly well. It supports all your hardware, broadly speaking. Um, take note of FB Dev and Pixman software rendering. It doesn't require GL. Nothing in Wayland requires GL. LW and commenters, hi. Um, it supports hardware overlays for video a lot better than X does. Um, the overlays will give you much better visual quality, especially when you're scaling than um, your 3D core will. And Western uses them to the hill. If you like C++, something about QML, don't know. I don't like C++. Mata, the engine behind GNOME Shell, has a pretty out-of-date port, which makes it a hybrid X11 and Wayland compositor, similar to Western. Um, GNOME Shell was running on it. I tried to bring the port up to date, ran out of time, but 
in a grand glorious future, it'll be great. And someone demoed it once in July, so it's ready for the enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> all your toolkits, GCK, Clutter, QT, all the ports are in upstream Git. Um, the Clutter port is now in a released version as well. Um, GStreamer supports video. Needs a bit of work. Um, there's a bunch of video stuff we need to sort out, but it's, it's not a core problem. But we are working on it. And now I'm Steve Jobs. So what I was saying before about how X is really terrible, variably latent IPC, but extremely chatty. It's really needy and also really bad. So everything you do will bottleneck through X and it'll do it repeatedly because you'll go from the client to the X server to the window manager to the server back to the client. Guess what the worst case for this is? That. It's really horrible. This is actually X's worst case is remote display. I'm not joking. Again, little thought experiment. Maybe if we killed all these really long round trips across um, a connection that takes ages because we're in Australia and the speed of light is still a thing, we run a compositor locally. So the client talks to the local compositor, all its round trips are basically free, and then the local compositor deals with the um, remote compositor. Because Optus is still horrible and ISPs still have bandwidth cuts, Maybe let's compress the images, or maybe you're on a mobile. Either way, that sounds like a good idea from the 70s, I think. <laughs> and if we did all that to X, we'd have VNC and it would be better. <laughs> it would actually be better. I'm not making this up again. It's not theatric, it's a fact. So. When I say we, I mean Christian's been experimenting with this for Wayland. There is a prototype in his branch, uh, in his tree for Western and Wayland, which gives you remote display based on this. It looks a lot like VNC, but then again, X today with a modern toolkit that isn't Motif, I don't know why I said both of those, um, <laughs> looks a lot like VNC, just an awful version of VNC. So we think it's going to be better at remoting the next. Ah. <laughs> it actually can't be. And with that, do we have any questions? <laughs> So when can we start using it? <laughs> Touche. When are we going to start using it? Um, the touchpad driver isn't very good at the moment. Um, it doesn't handle stuff like scrolling, tap to click and acceleration very well. Um, I'll start using it when the port to GNOME shell is brought up to date again, which I was meant to do, and when the touchpad driver is on par with X, which I was meant to do. <laughs> Any day now, basically. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good times. So, can we have circular windows in Wayland? You can have circular windows in Wayland, but it looks horrible. Do you remember Trillion on Windows? Sneak. Yeah. Terrible. You can. You have the freedom to make poor choices. <laughs> so your, your work in progress uh, remoting, is it uh, akin in terms of user uh, interface to um, rootless, or do you have to open the full and desktop to the remote machine? Um, you have the choice, the question being, is it rootless or is it rooted? Um, so rooted being sort of traditional VNC where you get a huge chunk of your desktop, and rootless where you get, here's another window. You have the choice. Wayland's all about choice. <laughs> okay, um, we're just going to take one last question. I believe we had someone down here. How does things go with multiple GPUs? How do things go with multiple GPUs? That's a client problem. 
<laughs> Where's Emmanuel? Here. Oh, oh there. All right. Um, GTK and Clodder are his fault. Tell him to sort it out. <laughs> um, in, in all seriousness, we've made as much provision in the protocol um, as we can for dealing with that. We tell the clients which outputs they're on. Um, the GL implementation um, has a way to associate the outputs in the GPUs if it wants. But it's a really, really hard problem. Um, punting it to clients isn't necessarily fair, but given they do all the rendering, it's about the only thing we can do. So, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for a very thank interesting you. talk, Daniel, and some fantastic slides.